Welcome to ASMR Readings by AC. If you are here for children's, middle grade, and young adult fantasy and spooky stories to help you relax and sleep, you have come to the right place. Today you're listening to Tom Thumb by Jacob and Wilhelm Green. Thank you so much for joining me. Let's go ahead and hit that thumbs up button and subscribe to this channel if you would like to hear more readings. Let's begin. There was once a poor woodman sitting by the fire in his cottage, and his wife sat by his side spinning. How lonely it is, said he, for you and me to sit here by ourselves without any children to play about and amuse us, while other people seem so happy and merry with their children. What you say is very true said he, the wife, sighing and turning round her wheel. How happy should I be if I had but one child? And if it were ever so small, nay, if it were no bigger than my thumb, I should be very happy and love it dearly. Now it came to pass that this good woman's wish was fulfilled just as she desired, for some time afterward she had a little boy who was quite healthy and strong, but not much bigger than my thumb. So they said, Well, we cannot say we have not got what we wish for, and little as he is, we all love him dearly. And they call him Tom Thumb. They gave him plenty of food, yet he never grew bigger, but remained just the same size as when he was born. Still, his eyes were sharp and sparkling, and he soon showed himself to be a clever little fellow who always knew well what he was about. One day, as the woman was getting ready to go into the wood to cut fuel, he said, I wish I had someone to bring the cart after me, for I want to make haste. Oh, father, cried Tom, I will take care of that. The car should be in the wood by the time you want it. Then the woodman laughed and said, How can that be? You cannot reach up to the horse's bridle. Never mind that, father, said Tom. If my mother would only harness the horse, I would get into his ear and tell him which way to go. Well, said the father, we will try for once. When the time came, the mother harnessed the horse to the cart and put Tom into his ear. And as he sat there, the little man told the beast how to go, cried out, go on, and stop, as he wanted. So the horse went on just as if the woodman had driven it himself into the wood. It happened that as the horse was going a little too fast and Tom was calling out gently, gently, Two strangers came up. What an odd thing that is, said one. There is a cart going along, and I hear a carter talking to the horse, but can see no one. That is strange, said the other. Let us follow the cart and see where it goes. So they went on into the wood, till at last they came to the place where the woodman was. Then Tom Thumb, seeing his father, cried out, See, father, here I am, with a cart, all right and safe. Now take me down. So his father took hold of the horse with one hand, and with the other took his son out of the ear. Then he put him down upon a straw, where he sat as merry as you please. The two strangers were all this time looking on, and did not know what to say for wonder. At last one took the other aside and said, That little urchin will make our fortune if we can get him and carry him about from town to town as a show. We must buy him. So they went to the woodman and asked him what he would take for the little man. He would be better off, said they, with us than with you. I won't sell him at all, said the father. My own flesh and blood is dearer to me than all the silver and gold in the world. 
But Tom, hearing of the bargain they wanted to make, crept out his father's coat to his shoulder and whispered in his ear, Take the money, father, and let them have me. I'll soon come back to you. So the woodman at last agreed to sell Tom to the strangers for a large piece of gold. Where do you like to sit? said one of them. Oh, put me on the rim of your hat. That would be a nice gallery for me. I can walk about there and see the country as we go along. So they did as he wished, and when Tom had taken leave of his father, they took him away with them. They journeyed on till it began to be dusky, and then the little man said, Let me get down. I am tired. So the man took off his hat and set him down on a clod of earth in a plowed field by the side of the road. But Tom ran about amongst the furrows, and at last slipped into an old mouse hole. Good night, masters, said he. I'm off. Mind and look sharp after me the next time. They ran directly to the place and poked the ends of their sticks into the mouse hole, but all in vain. Tom only crawled farther and farther in, and at last it became quite dark, so that they were obliged to go their way without their prize, as sulky as you please. When Tom found they were gone, he came out of his hiding place. What dangerous walking it is, said he, in this flowed field. If I were to fall from one of these great clods, I should certainly break my neck. At last, by good luck, he found a large empty snail shell. This is lucky, said he. I can sleep here very well. And in he crept. Just as he was falling asleep, he heard two men passing, and one said to the other, how shall we manage to steal that rich person's silver and gold? I'll tell you, cried Tom. What noise was that? said the thief, frightened. I am sure I heard someone speak. They stood still listening, and Tom said, Take me with you, and I'll soon show you how to get that person's money. But where are you? said they. Look about on the ground answered he, and listen where the sound comes from. And at last the thieves found him out and lifted him up in their hands. You little urchin, said they, what can you do for us? Why, I can get between the iron window bars of the person's house and throw you out wherever you want. That's a good thought, said the thieves. Come along, we shall see what you can do. When they came to the person's house, Tom slipped through the window bars into the room and then called out as loud as he could bawl. Will you have all that is here? At this the thieves were frightened and said, Softly, softly, speak low that you may not awaken anybody. But Tom pretended not to understand them and bowed out again. How much would you have? Should I throw it all out? Now the cook laid in the next room, and hearing a noise, she raised herself in her bed and listened. Meantime, the thieves were frightened and ran off to a little distance. But at last, they plucked up courage and said, The little urking is only trying to make fools of us. So they came back and whispered softly to him, saying, Now, let us have no more of your jokes, but throw out some of the money. Then Tom called out as loud as he could. Very well. Hold your hands. Here he comes. The cook heard this quite plain, so she sprang out of bed and ran to open the door. The thieves ran off as if a wolf was at their tails, and the maid, having broke about and found nothing, went away for a light. By the time she returned, Tom had slipped off into the barn, and when the cook had looked about and searched every hole and corner and found nobody, she went to bed, thinking she must have been dreaming with her eyes open. The little men crawled about in the hayloft, 
and at last found a glorious place to finish his night's nice rest in. So he laid himself down, meaning to sleep till daylight, and then find his way home to his father and mother. But alas, how cruelly was he disappointed. What crosses and sorrows happen in this world. The cook got up early before daybreak to feed those cows. She went straight to the hayloft and carried away a large bundle of hay with the little man in the middle of it fast asleep. He still, however, slept on and did not away till he found himself in the mouth of the cow, who had taken him up with a mouthful of hay. Good luck a day, said he. How did I manage to tumble into the mill? But he soon found out where he really was and was obliged to have all his wits about him in order that he might not get between the cow's teeth and so be crushed to death. At last, down he went into her stomach. It is rather dark here, said he. They forgot to build windows in this room to let the sun in. A candle would be no bad thing. Though he made the best of his bad luck, he did not like his colors at all. And the worst of it was that more and more hay was always coming down, and the space in which he was became smaller and smaller. At last, he cried out as loud as he could, Don't bring me any more hay. Don't bring me any more hay. The maid happened to be just then milking the cow, and hearing someone speak and seeing nobody, and yet being quite sure it was the same voice that she had heard in the night, she was so frightened that she fell off her stool and overset the milk pail. She ran off as fast as she could to her master, the parson, and said, Sir, sir, the cow is talking. But the parson said, Woman, thou art surely mad. However, he went with her into the cow house to see what was the matter. Scarcely had they set their food on the threshold when Tom called out, Don't bring me any more hay. Then the parson himself was frightened, and thinking the cow was surely bewitched, ordered that she should be killed directly. So the cow was killed, and the stomach in which Tom lay was thrown out upon a dun hill. Tom soon set himself to work to get out, which was not a very easy task. But at last, just as he had made room to get his head out, a new misfortune befell him. A hungry wolf sprang out and swallowed the whole stomach with Tom in it in a single gulp and ran away. Tom, however, was not disheartened and thinking the wolf would not dislike having some shad with him as he was going along, he called out. My good friend, I can show you a famous street. Where's that? said the wolf. In such and such a house, said Tom, describing his father's house. You can crawl through the drain into the kitchen, and there you will find cakes, ham, beef, and everything your heart can desire. The wolf did not wait to be asked twice, so that very night he went to the house and crawled through the drain into the kitchen, and ate and drank there to his heart's content. As soon as he was satisfied, he wanted to get away, but he had eaten so much that he could not get out of the same way he came in. This was just what Tom had reckoned upon, and he now began to set up a great shout, making all the noise he could. Will you be quiet? said the wolf. You'll awaken everybody in the house. What's that to me? said the little man. You have had your frolic, now of mine to be merry myself. And he began again singing and shouting as loud as he could. The woodman and his wife, being awakened by the noise, peeped through a crack in the door. But when they saw that the wolf was there, you may well suppose that they were terribly frightened. And the woodman ran for his axe, and gave his wife a sight. Now do you stay behind, said the woodman, and when I have knocked him out on the head, do you repass his belly for him with the sight? Tom heard all this and said, Father, father, 
I am here. The wolf has swallowed me. And his father said, Heaven be praised. We have found our dear child again. And he told his wife not to use the sight, for fear she should hurt him. Then he aimed a great blow and stroked the wolf on the head and killed him on the spot. And when he was dead, they cut open his body and set Tommy free. Ah, said the father, what fears we have had for you. Yes, father, answered he. I have traveled all over the world since we parted in one way or other, and now I am very glad to get fresh air again. Why, where have you been? said his father. I have been in a mouse hole, in a snail shell, down the cow's throat, and in the wolf belly, and yet here I am again, safe and sound. Well, said they, we will not sell you again for all the riches in the world. So they hugged and kissed their dear little son, and gave him plenty to eat and drink, and fetched new clothes for him, for his old ones were quite spoiled on his journey.